Good morning, everybody. Um, well, I'm, I'm glad to see, well, not that I saw any of you this morning, but hopefully some of you came to the session this morning and want to learn more in this session. We do have a special guest with us today. Um, sitting somewhere on your screen is a gentleman by the name of Darren Davis. So if you did come to the talk this morning, you've heard all about him. He is waving now. He is sans mas mask um, today. I was, I was telling him about our debate whether we should use the mask picture or not. Um, so if you, if you want to hear anything about those, those early days of Corpus too, you know, he, he is here and you can, you can hear it straight from the horse's mouth. But uh, really just open it up. As Jose said, keep it informal. You know, just have a, have a good discussion. So who would like to go first? Not everybody at once. Uh, Tom, I see your hand up. You're the um, one I see your hand up, so can you hear me? Yep. Um, yeah. So I know in the talk you gave today, you spoke very strongly about the not start from where we are now mm -hmm. stuff, um, which I've always felt was a very powerful message um, mm. coming out of the other stuff. So I don't know, is that something you think should be, is kind of a good thing, but wasn't done then? Or do you think actually that should be something that isn't really something that should be emphasized? I, uh, the, the latter, I, I think, I, and, and, you know, Darren can jump in too, but my personal opinion is um, it should be, it should be de-emphasized. Now that's not to say, and I probably should have said this in the talk this morning, that's not to say if, if, you, if you're using that approach and it works for you and it resonates or whatever, by all means, do it. Who, who am I to sit here and say, you know, that you shouldn't start from where you are now, right? Um, but it, it, that really wasn't the guiding philosophy back then. Um, Every Kanban implementation that I have done since then has not been, has absolutely on purpose not been, start with where you are now. Pratik can also talk to you about this. We've been implementing Kanban and Ultimate Software for four or five years. Um, and we specifically go into teams. And um, but, but like I said, if, if that works for you and, and that resonates, but just know it was, in my opinion, it was a bit of a hack that was bolted on later. And if we had some cocktails, I could explain exactly why that hack was bolted on later, but that's probably not worth, it's probably not worth spending much time or energy on that right now. I don't know, Darren, Darren or Pratik, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. I tend to have a, well, so I tend to have pretty strong opinions about all of this. Um, <laughs> some of them somewhat loosely held and others not so much. The, the idea for me is that if you start from where you are, you've already established a frame that's very difficult to break out of. So how you frame it going in is really going to determine what kind of latitude you give yourselves to question and to make change. And I think that's kind of a critical component. It's been a critical component, I think, of every place I've ever worked where we've tried to in, implement change. Is that if you start from, say, gosh, we're doing Scrum and it's not really working, well, then don't start from there. Try something new, right? I mean, I, I'm a big fan of start with something extremely simple and then iterate even if that means changing your process and just going back to basics. So when you say, uh, what do you start with then? So would you take an example from the previous organization or? So, and I don't know if you see Pratik smiling, I can see him smile behind, but, but we, we literally, I mean, what, what I literally do is, and, and I'll use an example of a team, right? We literally get the, the team together in front of a whiteboard. And as a team, we discuss, okay, how do we as a team want to work together? Right? Um, and, and it's really just kind of mapping it out from there and you, you come up with that working agreement. Anna Pratik, were you gonna jump in and say something? Yeah, no, exactly the same thing. We're literally just a whiteboard and let's talk about all the things we do and you know, all the things we want to do, not all the things we do. All, how, how are we, what is our working agreement? And let's just map it out. Let, let, let's, let's start well, from there. Start, okay. So why don't we start the current process, invite it to everyone for their ideas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and as I alluded to in the talk before, there's no doubt that what you come up with will probably bear some loose resemblance to maybe what you're doing right now. I mean, I think that's probably just yeah. kind of natural, um, you know, but, but as Darren was saying, it's, it's probably, I think, I think it's dangerous to get anchored in that. But again, if that works for you, you don't have to listen to me. Don't listen to me. Keep, keep, keep doing it, right? You know? Um, if I can, so reflecting back, um, what it sounds like you're saying is start from where the team would like to think it like to be and then iterate yeah. from there. Yeah. Um, not, I, I think the thing that, I think the thing that sets my teeth on edge with scrum implantations and other things is 
here's a one size fits all process we're going to implement on top of your team. Um, and I felt that the start from where you are now was a much healthier approach because at least it said, look, we, you, you're obviously sensible, pick smart people. Let's see where we're going to go with. If the, if the, oh God, I had, how do we do this? Um, if the, if the, if the on, if the on high handed down wisdom <laughs> is um, get the team to say how they'd like to work and start from there. I think I certainly get behind that. And I'd certainly like to come up with a better phrase than the on high handed down wisdom. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I think that's something I could, I could feel I could right. get behind. Yeah. yeah and, that, and that's why we frame um, where I'm, tr I'm trying, I'm desperately trying. I'm failing miserably, I think, but I, I like to frame Kanban as more of a strategy rather than a framework or rather than a methodology or whatever. Um, because, you know, we, we say things like, in general, it's better to visualize your work than to not visualize your work. In general, it's better to control work in progress than to not control work in progress. Is that going to be the case in all contexts? Probably not. You know, is all this stuff going to work in all contexts? Probably not. But your, your chances of being successful are generally better if you do these things than if you don't do these things. Um, so, yeah, I agree. Let's, let's get away from the on high handed down wisdom or whatever and think more in terms of, you know, like, like, like a general strategy, a general approach rather than a specific methodology. I think you're not advocating throwing everything out the door. You're, you're starting with, right. you're, you're facilitating a discussion with the team to try and work out what would actually make sense in that context. Right. Yeah. I, I, again, I, I think simpli as a starting point, simplicity is important. It's, it's, it's important to start, I think, from something fairly simple. I think as professionals, you know, we, we have a lot of experience. We know, we know the kind of basic schematic of how you build software. You have a sense of what you want to build. You get the people with the right skills. You build it. You demonstrate to somebody who cares that you built what you thought you set out to build, right? And the problem with process is that it tends to accrete complication. It tends to become more and more complex and heavyweight over time. So if you start from something which is heavyweight, where do you go? I just, I feel like, you know, it's, it's, it's not necessarily starting from where the team wants to be. It's starting from the simplest version of where the team wants to be. Um, and, and then again, iterating in micro iterations daily over time. What, uh, what's that? What's another question? That was, that was a good one to get us going. What's uh, something else? I actually have two questions. Mm, I don't know. I think you get one, but okay, but go ahead. I mean, they, they are pretty related to each other. Like, um, as, okay. Um, if you ask this morning about, um, um, if you ask myself this morning about the, the history of Kanban, as, as, you, as you talked um, on two hours ago, and um, what would I speak about it? I would always um, um, get back to, to David Anderson's name and to the blue book that um, maybe everybody knows about. And um, um, hearing your, your talk this morning, I got to know a, a different perspective and, and um, a, a different scenario on how things were created and how things started. So um, based on that, I had two questions in my mind. First, um, what was the, the, the real uh, role or contribution from David Anderson in the Kanban <laughs> scenario? And, and the second one, after you presented this um, um, pro-kanban.org website, I got myself confused about how it stands compared to the um, Lean Kanban University work and certifications and all the, these things that are happening on their side. Um, Darren, do you want to take, do you want, I've, I've, I've got a very simple answer to the very first yeah, question. I feel like you just handed us a loaded gun. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm just, I'm just like, a, a, I'm not trying to create any, any confusion here. Just um, I want to yeah. like, uh, uh, what's, what's it's the, an inevitable question, Daniel. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, so my recollection of it and my experience of it at the time was that uh, David really wasn't present. <clears throat> he, um, he was busy sort of establishing his sort of external reputation and not doing the day-to-day -day work. All of the day-to-day -day work that made Kanban work for us in that moment, in that, 
in that situation was all done by the team. It was all done by people like Dominica and me and Dan and Mark Grody and a bunch of people you probably have never heard of. Um, and all of it was specifically for the purpose of solving that problem. None of us were thinking about Kanban as something that would be marketed, could be that would apply to other groups. That was something that just wasn't in our minds. We were just trying to get our process working so we didn't get sacked. Um, and then, and then uh, once it started working, David would come in from time to time to show off what we were doing in a way that just, it was puzzling. It was, it was puzzling to those of us on the ground to hear him talk about what we had done and, and, and just try to reconcile those two things. Because there, even, even in the beginning, there were, that, that history was starting to diverge, I think. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the, the short answer is he was really, he was, he was more PR in the early days around drumming up interest in it, but not for the purpose of illuminating what we were doing, but for the purpose, I think, of establishing a, 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 a reputation for himself. That's yeah. about as diplomatic an explanation as I can, I can come up with. Thank you very much. Two, I mean, two, two things I would add if I, if I can. Um, I don't know if I'll be as diplomatic. I'll try. I'll try. Because um, I really do want to focus on the positive and, and going forward. Um, number one, you have to remember, especially when we started transitioning this from sustainment to the project work, David wasn't around. He wasn't even around. Right? He was gone. Um, so that's number one. Uh, number two, if we can turn a negative into a positive, I would say David's contribution was he showed us exactly what not to do. Right. And I suppose there is some benefit to that, you know, but I mean, pretty much everything that he recommended and said that we should do and it would work didn't, you know. Um, and so that, you know, that really kind of gave us a, you know, as a clue as a team of, 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 of what not to do. So um, uh one marker just to sort of, you know, <clears throat> put some numbers to it. I, my estimate is that he, he was actually in the stand-up one day out of five. So one day out of, one day a week, he might show up and observe what we were doing. But that was about it. I don't think he ever, I don't think maybe once for the pro, for the project, for the project, yeah. Kanban, maybe yeah, once. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> yeah. We, we talked about this about three years ago on the train back down from Clean Agile Scotland. I remember doing a little googling and reading off the back of that. And the fact that what I found was David had written the meta story, which actually dovetailed very well with Darren's view, but it was a retrospect you know, retrospectively it was coherent. And what I would say is David's views of the macro view, it 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 dovetailed quite nicely with Darren's um, text, but it didn't cover the detail that Darren had actually uh, documented at the time. Oh. And, and to me, like I said, whether we talk about David's contribution or not, that's, yeah. that's, not, that's not really what I wanted to focus on. I wanted to focus more on there was a concerted effort, a deliberate concerted effort to hide, to cover up, to minimize, to whatever the contributions of these other people, right? There, you know, what, uh, you don't necessarily have to believe me on that, but I, that's, that's exactly what I believe. Uh, and there's a reason that you haven't heard these names and you haven't heard these stories. There's a reason. So like I said, I, let's put that in the past. Let's, yeah. Let's water under the bridge. Let's move forward and let's focus on, as a community, positively. How can we? How can we move forward? So this is, this community is the way forward and pro kanban. Dot org. Hopefully. Yeah. What the, Hopefully. Yeah. Well, I suppose going forward. I mean, because it's it's not just, in my opinion, it's not just um, you know you get the safe community as well, which absorb everything. How, how do you? create a community that essentially builds on top of the shoulders of its contributors and acknowledges them, which from what I gather is one of the things that you're quite keen to do. Is that because we are all absorbing ideas from when we are little? At some point, it does get lost in history as to who is the original founder, but in one sense, does it matter? We are all absorbing, regenerating, recombining, and then building. I absolutely agree. Until somebody actually goes out and tries to profit off of the work of others. I mean, I agree. Our, our learning journey is dependent on, on learning from each mm -hmm. other and working together and doing all of these things together. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but hopefully it's, it's more about, like I said, the, 
the community oriented learning rather than the individualistic profit. I don't know, I guess, I don't know how to, I don't know how to say it any, any different the, than that. One thing I'll, I'll say about that, and when I, when I was, <laughs> the, the whole thing around the secret history of Kanban as a, as a, as a blog post and a presentation years ago, all started with a joke uh, that I sent to Dan over text because I was in a brown bag being done by somebody on my team about Kanban and David was mentioned as the founder of this and I was immediately texting Dan saying you won't believe what I'm what I'm in right now. Um, but the whole journey for me around talking through that history and going back and thinking about it was not who did what and who contributed what. Um, it isn't even really about the final product, um, which has evolved even since then. It's really about the process by which a team figures out how to become efficient and effective, right? How do you get individual teams, independent of any particular ideology or methodology, to start thinking about how to improve themselves every single day and drive that change and, and create an atmosphere in which people are encouraged to ask those questions and say, why do we do this? Are we getting the value out of this that we think we are? And can we do it better? Or can we do it in a more lean way? Or do we have to do it at all? And that's the process, I think. And that was the real kind of takeaway for me was that is an extremely powerful mechanism by which you drive change in teams and help teams own that change. So that's, that to me is the, the overriding thing in all of this. It's not about mm. who said what to whom and how it felt at the time or who made how many dollars off of whatever. It's really about the process by which you drive change into teams. Aren't, aren't we just dealing with sort of the inevitable of the commercialization of pretty much anything, you know, sort of in the Wardley, mat, Ward, uh, Wardley mapping sort of context? Uh, you know, capitalism will drive things to become more productized. And essentially, we've got a competition between various schools of thought trying to basically sell themselves as being a superior product. Yeah, but I mean, at, at, at some level, we need to come together as a community and, and acknowledge what, what behavior are we willing to stand for and what behavior mm -hmm. aren't we? You know, I mean, is, is this a safe place for people to participate or isn't it? You know, Are you proposing this is a community that's more contributory than, than uh, perhaps other ones out there? I'll, I'll be 100% honest. I don't even know what I'm proposing right, right now. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I don't know that I could, I could point to specific answers, but I do know that there is behavior right now in the traditional Kanban community that I think I don't agree with and I think most people don't agree with um, well, and that we as a community can fix. What are you hoping will happen next with the community? Um, I, I, I don't know, Pratik, I don't know, um, somebody else, <laughs> uh, just, just, I, I want to see more events. I mean, on one level, I want to see more events like this, um, like Lean Agile Global, you know, like, you know, Jose and JP and Ahmad have, have done a great job of creating a, you know, an open space for, for us to talk about these types of things. You know, Pratik and I organize a conference called Lean Agile US. Maybe it'll keep going. Maybe it won't. I don't know. Post COVID, who knows? Um, but you know, some 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 more some more opportunities like this for people to get together and just not be afraid to to talk about certain things. You know, um, you know, for fear of you know somebody coming down and you know expelling them or excommunicating. Them. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm 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 struggling. I'm waffling. But I you know mm. I, I don't know if I can put words to what I want. Yeah, I mean, I've been around, the, let's say, the London Agile scene for almost decades. And one of the things that has always struck me as so wonderful about the community is the amount of sharing uh, and learning that goes on. And I sometimes now find myself wondering whether I'm allowed to use some of the materials that some of the big frameworks have got out there because, you know, it's now copyright and... It's, you know, can I, can't I, yeah. can I include some of this when I share it with other clients that I work with? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if, you, if, if anybody has had a chance to look at um, the ProCombine.org website. Not that I'm necessarily forcing you to go there because I don't know if it's ready for prime time yet. But there, there is a link to say like the Combine guide. We've written a Combine guide, you know, that's kind of 
Um, I mean, it's inspired by, I don't wanna say it's based on, but it's inspired by say the Scrum Guide. And one of the things about the Scrum Guide is, you know, it's, it's Creative Commons, it's, it's free for everybody to use. You know, and I'd love to see more content like that that we can put out that is like, it's out there and it's free for anybody and you wanna use it, go for it. You know, it's not necessarily, you have to pay me a royalty to be able to, you know, take a, uh, you know, to implement Kanban. You know, that's, I think that's the exact opposite of what we want. We have a question. This is Rebecca. I'm, um, I'm in Switzerland. And my question is, well, I put it in the session in the morning, but I think it was too late. I'm using Agile for business, so for managing legal advice at PwC. Mm -hmm. And I don't have any engineering background or software background. And what I really struggled at the beginning was this kind of uh, terminology, always, always related to software development, so always everything related to engineering. And when I bring this to my, to my team, I really have struggles to translate it into business. And what I see and what I hear from all you um, guys about the issues that the teams are having in software development, they are very likely the same issues we're having in finance, in legal, in HR, in whatever. So if this material would be available in a more business-like, I would, I mean, people like me or teams like my team would be, um, they would be, it would be much easier to convince them that actually Agile is bringing really benefits in a personal and in a professional level. But right now, the material that I find is, I, I just have to translate everything. And I have yeah. to do my own kind of guides with drawings that is not including a computer, but it's including, I don't know, yeah. uh, something different. My no, question that... is, is, uh, is there any plan to have, I mean, this kind of community, I also agree, something very good. I would love my team to join this kind of communities, but they will be lost if people start talking about software because software is Chinese for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it is for me too, by the way. Um, so, but a, a, a thousand times, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that comment. Yes, 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 yes. You know, this should not be software only, right? Um, Complex problems, as you said, complex problems are complex problems are complex problems, you know, and it doesn't matter whether you're working on software, legal or finance or HR. Or, yeah. And so um, I, I would appreciate that feedback is that, you know, as you read through the guide, as you read through some of the materials that we put out, if it sounds like it is too much of an engineering software bent, then let us know and, and we, will, we will change it because, yes, it should, we should be welcoming all these things with open arms. It's, what's interesting to me about that is that Kanban itself isn't native to software development, right? It came in from other, it came in from other processes. So it's been adapted, I think, to software engineering. So it could easily be adapted to other, other areas. And, and, you know, I've seen it in my own experience where people are using it for, you know, for marketing campaigns and things like that. So it's, it's definitely adaptable. Um, the one thing I would say, and I, this applies to agile, in, in general is, you know, it's not necessarily a solution for all problems. And you have to be really cognizant of, of the fit of, of this model or any model to the problem you're trying to solve and give yourself the latitude to adapt it as you need. But well said, thank you for that. Thank you. Oh, and Rebecca, I think, I think it'll be great if you could read the guide and give us feedback because I, I just did another reading of it and it, it's it's very uh, problem agnostic right now. So I, I really I think it will agree with with what you're trying to say and to the but earlier maybe questions it's, of. Oh, ahead, yeah. Sorry. Maybe it's really the material, but also the kind the trainings that I joined. Like for example, I went to Dublin with Jose and we did the the Kanban training, mm -hmm. and I, I was the only person from business. They were all in, in engineer um, also yeah. developers and yeah. I. Um, Jose did an amazing job to make to make me feel really included in the training. But I was, but the rest of the people was it was very difficult for us to communicate in the same level. I don't know. It would be very good to have more people from the business in this kind of trainings because then everybody is really giving uh, good feedback, and not only engineers are are doing this. So engineers can actually convince finance people and show them how this can 
work much better and they can interact better. Absolutely. Um, I don't know, we, have, we probably have time for one, maybe two more questions if, if somebody, I don't know, I thought I saw somebody with their hand up earlier. And yeah, then cut off. Good question. Yes. Okay. Well, we don't want to cut off Greg. <laughs> yes, I was gonna say, don't let Greg talk. Okay, so um, opposition to LKU has been broad and been around for a while. And um, so there's an issue with them having a monopoly a part of David profiting from other people's work. Um, how broad is actually, so the group behind Pro Kanban? So I did look at the site. Obviously some people have contributed, so some names, no names are there, but there are a lot of names missing for me. Um, did you try to reach out? How, I mean, you, you probably don't want to name names, but I would like to know, is there anything going on? Are, is this an attempt to build that broad coalition or did you give up on that debate and say, I'll just go ahead with the people who want to do the thing? Yeah, so we, so we, we reached out to, as you can probably imagine, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people. Now, we obviously, obviously had to be careful who we reached out to and who we didn't reach out to, but um, it, as much as possible, we have tried to be inclusive. And it's not just people in the Kanban community, by the way. Um, that we have been talking to. It's people in, in other communities as well. Um, so, you know, we've, we've tried to be as broad based as possible, but you know, it's, it's still early days. Number one, it's still early days. Um, and the other thing I want to, I kind of want to be careful that this is, I don't want to position this necessarily as a, a competitor to LKU. You know, that's, that's not really what it is. I mean, if pe people may interpret it that way, um, some people in particular might interpret it that way, but it's, um, I would no, say I as soon as you offer certificates, you are a competitor to LKU. Yeah, uh, yeah, for, yeah for, fair enough. But I mean, there's there's probably uh, there's probably enough to go around, you know, that we don't necessarily need to to, to get into this us versus them type of thing. You know, I, like I said, as much as possible, I'd much rather focus on the positives that that we can bring, you know, as a community. But to answer answer your question, yeah, yes, I mean. Um, and that's that's why I was really grateful for this opportunity to speak here, so we can reach out, so people who want to get involved have an opportunity to get involved. Like I said, this is really we, I know we got the website up. I think last week, I think maybe, yeah. um, maybe even early this week. Um, you know, so it's really really early days, and I just I'm just really kind of excited to see where it goes from here. Thank you. But it's an alternative we can point if people ask they want to learn Kanban and they're saying they're looking at Lean Kanban University and we can say, well, why don't you have a look at Pro Kanban as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, something like that, yeah, yeah. I did not a question, but I really like the fact it's only not, the guide's only nine pages long. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that was, that that was intentional, I think, yeah. <laughs> Oh, there were bloody fights over what's in the guide and what's all. Oh, I'm, I'm yeah. still, I'm still nursing some wounds from that, from that one. And, and yeah. the same thing with the guide. We will iterate that, you know, <laughs> as well. I mean, there's nothing. I think it's not perfect. Also, add to what Rebecca said. I think the guide is readable by anyone from any department, from any organization. It's the English is intentionally kind of cleaned out, so there's no kind of technical jargon in there that's easily kind of confusing. And that's yeah, that's one of the goals of the approach behind the guide as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And people always talk about agile outside of IT as well. And I think this is, one of the challenges we're facing is, is, is to basically kind of expand Kanban outside of IT as well. Mm -hmm. And I think using the guide and the pro Kanban, I think it, it could really, it really kind of kick off as well. But the challenge would be to get case, case studies in from other departments as well. So accounting, sales, marketing, they need to really kind of grab it and have a go to make a difference. Um, right. Last year's inside. Have you come across Nigel Thurlow's stuff for THS? Um, I I have. I don't. I, I haven't studied it enough to have a, a comment about it. But yes, I, I mean, I have. I have seen it. Yeah. It hasn't really it? cover yet. The book's sort of due out shortly. Mm. Yeah. So I mean, he's um, he's a Scrum.org PST, no? Yeah. Uh, I Yes and no. Steve, Steve Porter, Steve Porter saying yes. So I mean, yeah, he's one of these people I think that has his foot in, in both camps. I mean, yeah, he's obviously. Well, he, has, he has a good relationship with them. Um, yeah. So he still has a good relationship with Dave West and um, yep. Jeff Sutherland. Yep. So I mean, but I mean, it's, to me, it's that kind of stuff. It's like, you know, I don't. Uh, um, 
you know, I mean, because you know, we could say the same thing about Steve Tendon and the Tame Flow stuff. I mean, that's, you know, there's probably a lot of goodness in there, whether you agree with that approach or not, you know. Um, safe isn't all evil as much as we'd like to say safe is, isn't, mm. is, it isn't all evil. Um, maybe mostly, but, um, <laughs> you know, uh, that, that's a joke. That's a joke. Was, you know, so all, all, all of these, you know, all of these communities we have an opportunity to learn from, people we have an opportunity to learn from. Um, so I, we're, we're over time. I don't know, Ahmad, we need to just wrap yeah. this up. There's a yeah. keynote starting in a few minutes. So let's, let's wrap anyway, up. Thank you. Thank you for everybody for joining. Um, you know, uh, hopefully there'll be more information trickling out, you know, as we go through this. Uh, I don't know if you can let the organizers of Lean Agile Global know if you want to, if you want to learn more, we can, um, we, we can try and, and keep everybody in the loop as much as possible. So thanks for the questions. Thanks for the participation. Special thanks to Darren for showing up last minute. I, I called him in a panic last night. I'm like, hey, can you join the session tomorrow? Right, mm -hmm. So um, anyway. All right. Have a great, have a great day. Cheers. Thank you, Dan. Thanks, thanks Ahmad. Thank you, Daniel. Thanks.